In this video, we're going to talk about how to use the discounted cash flow model to value a firm. So previously, we talked about the dividend discount model and how we would value the firm as a stream of dividends into the future, and we would take the present value and discount those dividends to the present. And then there was the total payout model where we looked at both dividends and share repurchases. But now with the discounted cash flow model, which we sometimes abbreviate as DCF, we're not going to concern ourselves with dividends or with repurchases. What we're concerned with is free cash flow. So I just want to show you briefly the, the model. So our share price is going to be a function of the present value of free cash flow plus cash minus debt. And then we divide all of that by the number of shares outstanding. So if you're wondering what this free cash flow is, I'll, I'll just give you a a quick review for those of you who've seen it before. Uh, free cash flow is earnings before interest and taxes times one minus the tax rate. We take that and then we add depreciation, subtract capital expenditures, and then subtract the increase in net working capital. So if that's a little complex for you or you haven't seen that before, I encourage you to check out the video I have on free cash flows. But for right now, let's just focus on an example and we're going to apply this DCF model that we've built right here to, to an actual firm. So let's say you're, you're thinking of investing in a firm and you have the following numbers, you have the following data, you know that the free cash flow for the firm is $90,000. The firm has $15,000 cash currently in its bank account and then it has $40,000 in debt and there's 50,000 outstanding shares for the firm and then your growth rate is 5%, your growth rate of your free cash flow, right here, that's 5%. And then your WAC, your weighted average cost of capital, is 12%. Now you might have noticed something. You might say, hey, wait a minute, for dividend discount model and total payout, didn't we use the cost of equity capital? And the answer is yes, that's what we use for those models, but we do not. We do not use the cost of equity capital when we're doing discounted cash flow model. And the reason is that we're, we're, using, we're discounting cash flows to both debt and equity holders, right? When we think about what free cash flow is, when we think about what this is, uh, free cash flow is just measuring the cash generated by the firm before any payments to debt holders or equity holders. So when we discount the cash flows, we want to discount the cash flows as if they're cash flows to both debt and equity, right? So debt and equity holders. And if you say, hey, wait a minute, well, debt holders aren't going, you know, why are we valuing the firm thinking about debt holders and stuff? Well, don't worry about it because after we come up with the discounted cash flows or discounted free cash flow, we're going to subtract out debt. So we're going to factor it out of the equation so that we're not having borrowed, the firm's borrowing decisions affect the valuation. So bottom line is you want to use WAC instead of the risk of uh, the cost of equity capital for the DCF model. So now let's just, let's go ahead and start putting, putting our model together here. So first off is we're going to have in our numerator, we're going to have that 90,000 free cash flow, and then we need to discount that, right? So we're going to discount it. We're going to have the 12% WAC, and then we're going to subtract out our growth rate. That's 5%, right? So we've got a 5% growth rate there. And that, let's see, right here. So now we're going to add in that cash, that $15,000 cash, and then we're going to subtract out the $40,000 in debt. And then in our denominator, we're going to have the number of shares outstanding. Now, I'm going to show you our original formula just so you can see where all this came from. Right? We've got the present value of our free cash flow. All that is is this 90000 we have right here. And then we divide it, we discount it by this right here, which is just our WAC, our 12%, minus our growth rate of 5%, the growth rate of the free cash flow. That's how we discount the free cash flows. That's how we take the present value. But then we add in that cash of 15,000, subtract out the 40,000 in debt. That's what we got going on there. And then in the denominator, we just divide by the number of shares outstanding. So I'm just gonna break down the math a little bit here and there's a little bit of rounding. So if we don't get the same exact number, don't worry about it. 1,285,714 plus 15,000 minus 
40,000 all over 50,000. Try not to skip any steps here so I don't confuse you. And then that's going to equal $25.21. And I should have put up here, excuse me, I should have put this is equal to our share price. So down here, this is, these are all just equal to the same thing. So this is our share price for this firm that we just valued is $25.21. And the advantage of this over the dividend discount model and the total payout model is that we were able to value the firm without considering dividends or share repurchases or the firm's use of debt or the firm's borrowing, any of those decisions that kind of created issues for the dividend discount model, the total payout model. We have, we've been able to basically hold all that constant and come up with a valuation 